You're listening to the Clean Comedy Podcast with James Creviston and Luke LaCoy. Hey everybody, welcome to the Queen County Podcast, it's James, and this week it's just me. And I really wanted to talk about something I thought was like super interesting um, this week, which is comedy, right? Comedy crossovers. And I want to talk about comedy crossovers. When you think of comedy crossovers, at least when I think of the word crossover, I was thinking of like comic books for like Marvel and DC crossover or character crossover. But when I think about comedy, I think about how does comedy cross over to other things? Um, and it really hit me this, this last week. Um, I've taken some gigs to do comedy writing for things, uh, whether it be like Twitter, Instagram captions, cr- helping create memes, helping to create uh, storylines, helping, and you know, I've also worked on screenplays, scripts, web series, all kinds of stuff, right? So comedy has this crossover possibility. Uh, a lot of comedians go, I want to be a famous comedian. And that's great. That's wonderful. I, I eventually want to make stand up my full time thing. That's all I do. But I also love writing, so that'll probably never happen. But that being said, think about all the funny people that you know that are famous and what else they do, right? Like, I was just thinking about this um, whether you like it or hate it or whatever, I'm not even going to get into the controversy of this. But Santa Inc. is the new thing that Seth Rogen came out with. And Sarah Silverman is one of the main voices. Well, she's a stand up comedian. She also writes. She also acts. She also voice acts. It's one of those things where comedy is a crossover ability. <laughs> now that I say crossover, I think about like country music people who cross over to pop music too. I don't know why that, that struck me. But that's one of those things where comedy crosses over to so many things that we don't even realize it, right? If you're watching TV and you're watching commercial, you're watching YouTube and and a commercial comes up, a lot of those commercials or ads use humor to bring the message to you. Now they're not, sometimes they're selling you stuff. Sometimes they're just showing you the product, but humor has a way of grabbing us. It is a benefit as a comedian to know how to write or create other things than stand up. Um, that's why I always tell people, learn to write a joke. If you can learn to write a setup and a punchline, right? Those, that kind of joke, a simple setup punchline joke, you could write so many other things off of that because conversations are in, in movies, right? Where you get the funny parts, like a sitcom or a, a comedy film is a setup of either a situation or a line. And then the punchline is either delivered by the same person or by another person or an action in that situation that makes it funny. Uh, the big one being things like like the Simpsons, right? They Marge tells Homer not to do something. Homer ignores her. And then the situation becomes a bunch of things that happens. And maybe he recognizes it or, or he doesn't recognize it. And it, you get the humor out of that. That's what I'm talking about when I say comedy crossover. Is we have to, as comedians, be aware that – we have this ability to change things, right? A uh, big thing I saw recently is crypto and NFTs. There's a company in that business that does NFTs for comedy, for comedians. Hannibal Burris had one. Maria Bamford had one from this company. A couple other people that I saw. And I was thinking, man, comedy can touch everything. Like if it could, if it could touch crypto, right? If it could touch this new web 3.0 type situation, if we could touch that, it's like, what are the what what else can it do? Um, so I want to tell every comedian that's out there, hey, just because you're doing stand-up doesn't mean you shouldn't learn to write things or create other things. I think the future of comedy is our ability to take our humor, our writing style, our content, and create something different, right? Now it could be you could want to create a comedy special like Paul Moonjean was on was on just talking about that or we had other comedians come on and talk about their specials or their albums or getting on a show or winning the world series of comedy, like all kinds of stuff like that. There's so many pieces that people can do, but I think the big thing that a lot of people are missing is the writing aspect. Um, A lot of times when we talk about comedy, when I ask comedians, how often do you write? Do you write a joke every day? What are you, what are you doing to 
write or increase your standup, a lot of them say, oh, no, I just write whenever I feel like it or I just take notes or whatever I feel. That's great. I, I also take notes whenever I feel like it. But if I didn't write a joke today, then I messed up, right? If I didn't write something new today, I messed up. So it really has to be in our best interest in order to grow comedy and not just comedy as in stand up to grow comedy as a per, as a dominant force in the world it, it it we need to be doing other things i if you don't know about the spotify incident right now spotify is taking down comedians albums because they don't want to pay them fairly which means those comedians have to find another way to generate revenue right so this is where owning our stuff like an NFT or owning our stuff, like our own album that we can sell on our website or that we push out on our own through like CD baby or one of those other types of programs, which we've had other communities talk about on here. That's how they may generate money or creating a book or creating a, some other media that you are in ownership of, because that's the future really comedy. The future of comedy is owning our own material. This is why I like the idea of the NFT thing. I think it's really interesting. I'm trying to reach out to the company that did this. Um, the Hannibal Burris would do an NFT show. I think it was in Utah too. So it was like super random, but it was very cool. And I watched some of the stuff. I don't, I don't own any of the NFTs. Uh, I don't got that kind of money. But, <laughs> but it, was, it was amazing to see co comedians and cryptocurrency work together to make something that I just, it really blew my mind. I think that comedy is the next level of stuff. Uh, even if you watch, okay, if, you're, if you're a subscriber of a YouTube channel, nine times out of 10, they use, even when it's a, a not a serious topic, but when it's a, a learning channel or a learning topic, there's still injections of humor into that because people learn better when they're engaged and they laugh, right? The top, rated shows on tv a lot of them are comedies right some of the greatest shows of all time are comedies right we just had it's always sunny in philadelphia run for 15 seasons comedy is something that is on the cusp of changing everything and i think with this nft thing that i just saw there is a whole new world we have we have apps for comedy like uh if you haven't seen it uh, a live show app to go do stand up on your phone live whenever there's a thing like you could just go anytime and do five minutes to stay. it's amazing right we live in a new world where comedy tech and technology and all these things are meeting and colliding and creating something new i mean the top um podcasts in america and in the world are comedy podcasts right yes joe rogan does talk to a bunch of different people but it's a comedy podcast he's a comedian he does talk and they laugh and they make jokes and whatever it's Comedy is poised to cross over into every part of our lives. And if it hasn't touched most of the parts of your life yet, you're, you're doing something wrong because it's everywhere. I, I am slowly realizing and as I'm, as I'm learning, as I'm getting pulled into these new things, I've been pulled into a new crypto NFT program and I've been pulled into a new, uh, podcast blogging thing i work gonna be a co-host on another podcast called making a geek podcast so check that out uh, i'll be recording my first episode with them on thursday i went to my first comic con and there was comedians there that i knew that were doing things in the comic community like it was really i'm so serious that comedy is touching every facet of life now and comedy is crossing over from this niche stand-up thing that we're, we're many of us in comedy are used to to becoming a piece of the global economy it's such a unique and interesting thing i am very impressed by it i think if you're a comedian right now and you're listening to this if i if it was me starting right now and i had to go give myself advice this is exactly what i would be telling myself there's five things that i would be focusing on number one like i say Learn to write a setup and a punchline for jokes. Learn that basic structure. Write as many of those setup punchline jokes as you can. They don't even have to be sequiturs. You don't have to write about the same topic. Just write like, I saw my dog today, blah, blah, blah. And then you punchline for it or whatever. 
write like a hundred or a thousand of those. Write one every single day, right? That's what I'm saying is write them every day, write one every day. Then the next thing I would say is learn how to write a sketch slash commercial because a sketch and a commercial are very similar. There's a lot of beats to them that are very similar. You have to find the funny. You have to find what the topic is and make it funny. Learn to do those two things, write, write, a, write a sketch, write a commercial. Those, that's number two of those things. Then number three, read a bunch of TV pilots and screenplays and learn to write even a, 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 just a small sitcom or even a sitcom scene, right? Learn how to write those things because what it's going to do is allow you to understand um, punch up and understand the format of a script or a, a sitcom or a TV episode, right? Because these things are coming out of everywhere. Now, after that, I would look into learning how to create memes or create, I hate to say this word because it annoys me, but viral content, that's the big thing that is coming next is a lot of people want comedians for viral content. Now, viral, whatever they can say, I want viral content that'll go crazy and everybody will watch it and blah, blah, blah. There's no way to guarantee that, right? Even when someone comes to me and says, hey, I want you to create viral content. I'm like, that, that's not what it is. I'll create funny content, humorous content. I will tie it into your brand. I will try to target a demographic or a group and then go from there. So learn that marketing process for humor, right? Because now that you know how to write a joke, now that you know how to write a commercial or a sketch, now that you know how to understand how to read a screenplay and write a, a you know, a scene now the next step is how do you turn those little pieces into marketing material? And that's the secret there, right? Because everybody wants to use humor to market stuff. Dollar Shave Club, Harmon Brothers. These are the two biggest things that I get asked to do all the time. Uh, Dr. Squatch videos, all those things. If you go start looking at commercials, you'll see there is a style, there's a pattern, there's a comedy portion to all of the new media stuff and it's it's going everywhere the next thing i would i would say if there's this is number five for me right is i would be going and looking at um internet how like um blog posts website design uh crypto nfts those kind of things learning how they work so that you can take your material that you create your content that you create and you can own them because that's the next big thing is if you don't own your content, somebody else does, and they're going to be get rich off of your back. And I'm seeing it more and more where comedians are even taking recording the special before they go do dry bar or something else so that they have the album portion that they, they then can sell because once dry bar has it, they own it, right? They own it and they will pay, they pay out residuals or whatever based on comp on how things work, how many views, like downloads, uh, if you get tipped on this on the site, like all that stuff, it does come into play. But um, if you don't own the audio portion of it, then they can also you sell that to like Spotify or whatever. Um, and I know some people who have done that who have recorded this special first, like auto auto audio wise oh, wow i cannot speak english um audio wise and then they went and recorded the same special for um dry bar or somebody else and then they took the audio and released it to spotify i know spotify is not what we want but like spotify itunes um any like any of those kind of companies they release it to those things because they own the rights to them. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do that there. I, I can, uh, you know, there's, if you go Google it, you'll find out how to put it on there and I can reach out to some more people. If that's something that people really want to know about. But what I'm saying is the future of comedy is crossing over into other things. Uh, if you are a, if you have, say you have a degree in law, can you make law funny, entertaining and explain things if you can using comedy you have a role if you're in business can you explain business concepts in a funny way but that is also educational and cuts gets across the board um i did some things where i was working for someone who does like movie reviews right and they want they knew the xyz like these are things but they wanted to make humorous comments about the film or whatever that's adding to that to to those things comic books um, 
medical stuff, right? I, I worked with a person who does medical um, things and they wanted humor in their medical things. Even though they're talking about a serious subject, they want to make it funny so it wasn't dry and it wasn't uh, lame and it wasn't boring, right? And it wasn't, their stuff wasn't already anyways, but adding a few punchlines, adding some more humor definitely blew, you know, grew what they were doing. So stuff like that, um, uh, fashion companies, food companies. I just done something, some stuff for food recently for a, uh, a amazing food company that I hope to work with again. But stuff like that, drinks. I mean, ev- everything out there. If you are familiar with it, if your degree is in biochemistry, can you also make it funny? If you can, you could do a lot more with that because people are t- are they want to learn stuff, but they don't want to be bored while learning it. You know, I. I learning coding and the best part of some of the coding is the gamification of the funny things that we do with the coding. So this is, this is the future. Comedy needs to be a crossover thing. It needs to become the thing that touches every part of life. And now that I'm seeing, like I said, now that I'm seeing NFTs, cryptocurrencies, all these other things get involved and bring comedy into their world, right? When's the last time you saw a crypto company be funny? No, they're trying to tell you about how much money they're going to make for you and they're the future, blah, 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 blah. But that's not, that's changing and it's becoming a big business. Um, Comedy is something that a lot of people have had on the fringes for a long time that is now crossing over into the mainstream and going to be something that changes the world. I know that if we stand together, we can make comedy change the world. Now, I'm also saying, uh, I've talked to some people about stand-up comedy unions. And I think that is another thing that's happening too, where workers' rights and working comedy, right? We say comedy is our hobby, comedy is our passion, comedy is our love. Well, if you ever hope to be successful, you're going to have to get paid at it. So unionizing comedians might be the next thing too, because that'll be a way for us to compete with actors, other writers, with stuff like that, and be able to make our service stand out above um, other things. I mean, there's no reason that comedians shouldn't have a guild like actors do, right? I mean, they perf- comedians perform just like artists that are in plays or artists that are on shows or whatever, or in commercials and comedians are in commercials. Now I get that those are kind of crossover, but if you're performing on a stage every night, should you not be getting paid a wage? I don't know. I think it's a big debate that's going to come soon because I feel like there is a lot of changes coming and comedians, we need to step up to the forefront and be on this for this comedy crossover. The world's changing fast, uh, a lot faster than uh, even I realized um, and I'm noticing it. So think about what you could do to change or to be part of the change for comedy because I know a lot of you are smart. I know a lot of you know other things besides stand-up take those skills, add comedy to them and make something new. Blow up the, 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 the world with this new style of comedy based on whatever your knowledge is. So like, again, if you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, a biochemist, a scientist, uh, whatever you are, whatever accountant, whatever, right? Take the humor and build something new crossing comedy is crossing over into the mainstream. Be a part of it. Let's change the future. Uh, check out some of the NFTs, NFT stuff. Check out some of the crypto stuff that's coming uh, from comedy. There's a lot of if you just type in crypto comedy. I'm not going to say any names yet because I'm not pushing anything. But just look at it. Just go check it out because it's super interesting. It's it's like it's it's it just blows your mind. Uh, I am grateful for everyone that listens. We have three more episodes left for the year. Three, three more episodes left for the year, and uh, we're gonna do obviously a. Uh, a 2022 like like uh what we're what we're what we're planning on goals for 2022 we're gonna do a couple more interviews i'm hoping to have luke back i'm hoping to have um danny back so and hoping to to have another guest soon so thank you guys for listening i know this is a shorter episode we don't have anybody to interview but i wanted to get this out because to me that seeing how comedy is affecting things now has really lit a spark under me and made me be like, okay, I've got to keep pushing forward. I have projects coming, but I've got to keep pushing forward because things are changing more rapidly than I realize. So don't, don't get down on yourself. 
work on writing jokes, work on writing sketches, work on writing scripts, work on understand marketing and work on understanding web 3.0, crypto, NFTs, all that stuff because the future is coming so fast, so much faster than we thought. And it's going to change all of our lives. It's going to especially change comedy. Thank you again. Thanks for listening. Please like, subscribe. Please go follow on YouTube. Please give us thumbs up and likes on YouTube. Uh, please write good reviews. We want to go to 2022, just growing and growing more. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for listening. Please have a good week and we'll talk to you soon.